Hi everyone, it's Monica and I'm filming the intro to my reading vlog of The Ballad of Never After. So The Ballad of Never After is book two in the duology by Stephanie Garber and this is part of the world of Caraval. If you haven't read the Caraval series yet, I do recommend that you check that one out before diving into this one. Myself, when filming this intro, I have already read the book. I did get an arc of it from NetGalley and it was in audiobook form, but today my copy just arrived in the mail and it's the beautiful indigo exclusive edition exclusive story from jack's point of view as you can see here and i absolutely love this edition because of the naked cover it's like one of the books that are featured in the book itself so i really love how they did that the spine is just like that. I'm gonna grab the first book of this duology, Once Upon a Broken Heart, and I'll just put them both behind me because they're really pretty next to each other. Anyways, with a really brief summary of Once Upon a Broken Heart, if you have not yet read this series, we're following Evangeline who is a hopeless romantic and she has a knack of getting into trouble and she also has rose gold hair. When the love for her life is set to marry her stepsister, Evangeline gets really desperate and she makes a deal with the Prince of Hearts Jax and little does she know and quickly she finds out that making a deal with an immortal is not really the best idea here. Some expectation that I had going into book two was I wanted more romance, more character development for Evangeline, more of Jax being his morally great self, and more fairy tales and magic in this world that Stephanie Garber created. And just to be transparent, going into the vlog portion of this video, there are spoilers. So this is your spoiler warning. This is the second book of the duology and I just wanted to just speak freely. I know I should probably not say a lot of spoilers, but I can't help it. I'm going to go into the vlog portion now of the video. All right, so I just got back from work. I listened to the first 20% of the book. So I am on chapter 8 now. And my initial reaction is that I really like getting back into the Caraval-esque world, but we're now in the Northern Kingdom. Getting back to the familiar characters such that we were introduced to in book one, Evangeline, and we have Jax again on the page. I'm just having a lot of fun with this series. I really love Jazz. He's the broken-hearted love interest and Evangeline doesn't want anything to do with him and I absolutely love their dynamic. There's a hint of possible romance but there's no actions being taken towards that and right off the bat we learn of a new curse and I really like this one because it's tied to life and death. It's even more dire for Evangeline to get help from Jax and there's already some scenes that Jax is saving and also taunting and teasing Evangeline. Uh, we also have the return of Apollo, Mirasol, Evangeline's stepsister, and also we have Vampire Luke coming back into the fold. So it's going to be interesting to see how everyone interacts and after everything that happened in book one i'm just really excited to see what happens next hi um i'm in my washroom because the lighting is good here so so far i think i'm around 40 percent into the audiobook and we're learning about evie's new curse and um how a lot of the characters in this book have a curse that they would like to have lifted and Evie is the key to solving all of their curses and she needs to be able to find these like four stones in order to activate Valerie Arch that will enable her to break all these curses. In my mind I've been calling Evangeline Evie because I recently read the final gambit and in that book there is a character named Evelyn and there's a nickname like Evie and I don't know I just stuck in my mind. So, so far with Evangeline, I really enjoy her struggles and she's still trying to save Apollo and help him get uncursed as well as with her relationship with Jax being quite teasing. And aside from that, I just really enjoy the scenes with Jax and Evangeline. I just thought of how I really enjoyed how Jax is doing whatever it takes to keep Evangeline safe 
and he does it quite openly and she notices um with avon doing his character development she is learning how her past love in luke isn't what true love can be and i really like how she's realizing that people don't need to take advantage of her as much as they did in book one so i really do like how she's losing her naivety and i think that's all my thoughts in this part all right hi guys I literally just came back from work and I figured out that I got something in the mail and I finally got my physical copy of The Ballad of Never After. It is the Indigo exclusive edition and there's a little chapter with Jax's point of view. I have not yet read it. I really love this color, that's why I got it. And it matches with... I really love how it matches with the Once Upon a Broken Heart. That's also the Indigo Exclusive Edition. And the covers just look so pretty together. And also don't mind me, I have my Starbucks here. I got a tall ice cinnamon dolce latte. And I got like two thirds decaf because it's kind of late in the afternoon. And I don't want to be up all night because caffeine does affect me that way. But I picked up a little treat. Okay, so the last time that you saw me, I was around 40% of the way through of this book. But now I actually finished the book yesterday and I didn't pick up the camera until now. But I'll give you a brief summary of my thoughts throughout that last half of the book and it was a wild ride. So with Evangeline and Jax, I really like how Jax continues to call her Little Fox as a cute nickname. I didn't mention this earlier but I really like how Jax and Evangeline share thoughts together and it's like a magical mental link or something and how Jax continues to be very protective over her and the utmost highlight of this book has to be the relationship between Evangeline and Jax, their banter and teasing and flirting with each other was top-notch like I loved having their interactions on the page like there was one scene where Evangeline catches Jax with someone else and in her mind she's like I'm not jealous I'm not jealous but it's obvious that she is and also same with Jax who really pushes down his emotion and doesn't really show his emotions at all towards Evangeline or anyone at all that he cares about and basically he's being so morally gray towards Evangeline. That kind of behavior is not the best but it really does make for a really entertaining relationship to read about. And we also get a really nice insight into Jax's past which we haven't gotten before and I really just want him to be happy and not be uncaring that he is towards everyone. Related to Jack's past, when Evangeline was really injured and Jax took her back to the hollow where she could heal properly and safely, those scenes between them were really nice and flirty and it was really sweet to see that progression in their relationship. Although there is the underlying frustration and avoidance between these two. And one other key point is that I love that Evangeline is finally taking some matters into her own hands. And that character growth was so great to witness. And she is seeking out answers on her own and not willfully trusting every single person she comes across so i really love that for her and let's just talk about that ending of this book like the last couple pages like literally like the last 20 ish pages simply broke my heart into little itty bitty pieces and i was really shocked i did not see that ending coming and i really hope it's not the end and i hope we do get some more closure or books with Evangeline and Jax together and I really do love how Jax did use the powers of the four stones to literally go back in time in order to save Evangeline's life and although this ending is bittersweet really on the bitter it really does fit how throughout the book there was a lot of mention of the tragic ends of ballads and fairy tales so it was fitting in that regard but I still really hope that there is a book three so when you next see me, I think I'm just going to sit down and actually give you some of my more like cohesive concluding thoughts on this book. Alright, here are my concluding thoughts on The Ballad of Never After. Now just thinking about that title, that makes me even more sad because it's really fitting to how this book ends and this duology ends. I think it's only a duology. I'm hoping it's not just a duology, but so far that's what we've had news of. And I do have to say the audiobook was 
fantastic like the narrator has different voices for all the characters and she has like a way of speaking of like the different tones and you can really hear the emotions in each character's voice and she even does like the laughs or like the snickers that characters have so it really did bring the book to life for me i think if you just have like the physical book i think that it's fine as well because then you also have the little letters and the news articles that we get in these types of books so this book is more of a fantasy romance which i was not mad about and i was actually quite happy about since book one was leaning more to just fantasy learning about evangeline and getting our footing into this world again but book two really dives in deeper into the romance which i was really really happy about and my favorite character has to be Jax. he is the morally gray fate and learning more about Jax in this book was a delight and just having his character around was really nice as well i still want to see more Jax and to see more of his development or rather maturity in his sense to get over his own heartbreak so i do want to see more of that coming up but i don't know if you will get it stephanie lerber please write another book about Jax. and that's kind of funny because evangeline is kind of like us readers who fall for the morally great villain and she does do that and eva in this book was fantastic she has great character growth like i just mentioned in the last clip this book itself had so many twists and turns i couldn't get them straight and that ending still completely shocked me and broke my heart and i think you will cry if you end up reading this duology and all the side characters themselves really didn't make a more richer story since they're all unique and they all have their own backstories and they're all crucial to the story itself as well which i really do appreciate of course i love the writing and how this world can be so cruel and although it's full of fairy tales it is also showing the side of fairy tales being tragic so i really do enjoy this world a lot i still want a sequel because that ending was not it for me but i ended up giving the bella never after 4.5 out of 5 stars because i couldn't put this book down even when i had to although i did i just wanted to pick it back up and finish reading it so that's all of my thoughts on this book i just simply want more of this world but Let's see what happens. Comment down below what you thought of The Ballad and Ever After. And if you want to read more books from Stephanie Garber, I'm going to end this vlog here. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. And ring the bell to be notified of my future uploads. I hope you all had a wonderful day. And I'll see all of you in my next video. Bye.